Now that I understand both the data that I have to work with and what GIS operations I'll have to use to determine which airports meet the scenario criteria, I can begin building my model. So to begin my model, I'm going to open up the Processing Toolbox. To do that, I'm going to go to the Processing menu and choose Toolbox. And the Toolbox panel opens up on the right-hand side of QGIS. This is another dockable window like the Layers panel. You can move it wherever you'd like. But I think many people find that this right-hand place where it lands by default is a good spot. The Processing Toolbox has hundreds of geo algorithms that you can use to process GIS data. And it has, by default, a simplified interface at the bottom. And you can click this toggle and choose the Advanced Interface, which just organizes the tools into the parent software category. So there are algorithms for QGIS, those for Saga, those that come with Goodle and Ogre, those that come with Grass, etc. So for this lab, we're going to use the Advanced Interface. Again, it's all the same tools, it's just a different way of organizing them. I'm also going to want to set up some parameters. You'll notice that there's a models section here. When we build our model, we can set up some parameters so that our model will be a tool under that models category in the processing toolbox. So there's a default folder for models, and if they're saved there, they'll end up in that models part of the toolbox. So to set this configuration, I'm going to go to the processing menu to options. So I'm going to expand the model section and you'll see there's a default path for a models folder. I'm going to double click on that until I get this ellipsis button on the right hand side. Click that and I'm going to browse to my lab5 data folder. And I'm going to create a folder in here called my data. And that my data folder is going to be where my model is saved. With that setting checked, I'll click OK. Next, I'll open the Graphical Modeler. I'll go back to the Processing menu, to the Graphical Modeler option. When the window actually opens, it's called the Processing Modeler. But it's a window that allows you to create complex models using an intuitive graphic interface. So when working in a GIS, most analysis operations are not isolated, but rather they're part of a chain of operations that lead to the end result. Using the Graphical Modeler, that chain of processes can be incorporated into a single process. This allows you to run the entire analysis as a single operation. It also allows you to execute the same model on different sets of inputs. No matter how many steps and different operations it involves, the model is executed as a single operation. And this saves time and effort, especially for larger models. So on the left-hand side, we have inputs and algorithm tabs. And on the right-hand side is where the model will actually be developed graphically. So the first step in building this model is naming the model. So where it says enter model name here, I'm going to put my cursor and call this helipad site selection. And then there's an enter group name. This will be basically a model category underneath the models part of the processing toolbox that this model is saved into. And I'm going to call this GST102. Once that's done, I'm going to save my model. So the save model window opens up and it defaults to the my data folder that I set in my preferences earlier. This will get saved as a dot model file, and I'll call this helipad site selection. And click Save. The first analysis step will be to create my study area boundary. This will involve creating a Nueces County shape file from the USA wide counties layer. The first step in adding an algorithm to this model is creating an input. All my data for this model is vector data, points, lines, and polygons. So I'm going to select this Inputs tab and double click on the vector data input. So the parameter definition window opens. And here I'm simply defining the conceptual parameter. I want to actually connect this to the GIS data until I'm ready to run the model. So I'll name this input parameter counties LYR. And here this LYR suffix is going to be my naming convention for parameters which are all GIS layers. Other parameters will be attributes. So for this, the shape type is polygon. And I'm going to leave this as required. It's an essential part of the model. I'll click OK. And my first input is added here. And all of the objects that you put into this graphical right-hand window become things that you can move and arrange aesthetically as you like as, as the model gets developed. The next parameter will be a table field. So I'm going to double click on the table field parameter. And again, I'll give this a name, K. 
county name ATTR and ending the name with ATTR is going to be my naming convention for table field inputs. For these I have to choose a parent layer, the layer whose attributes we're going to be working with. We only have one layer in our model right now so there's only one to choose from. Counties will be the parent layer to this table field input. So I'll click OK. I'm going to drag this below its parent layer. Again you can arrange these model elements into an attractive and intuitive flow. And now I'll add the extract by attribute algorithm. So now I'll click on the algorithms tab. It looks a lot like the toolbox. I'll expand the QGIS section, expand vector selection tools, and double click on extract by attribute. So there's a slight difference here between the graphical modeler tool and a standard toolbox tool. Here the output can be saved as a temporary file that will be used as an input to the next algorithm, or it can be saved as a permanent layer that you'll specify when you run the model, a shape file for example. Typing in anything into this space tells the modeler that this output will be saved as a permanent physical file. The text that you supply will be the description for the output when executing the model. Right now we're designing a conceptual model and we're not connecting this to data, inputs or outputs until we actually run it. You'll choose the actual name of the output shape file and its location when you actually execute the model. In this case, since I may want the Nueces County boundary for cartographic reasons when I'm displaying the results of my analysis, I'm going to choose to save this out to a layer. So I'm going to put my cursor in here and call it Nueces County. The last thing I have to do is actually choose the operator and the value for this. So the operator is going to be equal. I'm going to be using the county name attribute and setting that equal to Nueces County. So I'm choosing the operator and typing in the output value. Once that's done, I'll click OK. And you can see this is now connected to the two first inputs. So we have our vector layer input, our table field input, we have our first geo algorithm. And as you notice, as I move this around, the connecting lines move with it. And then we have the output from that. Um, this is there because we actually specified an output for this. If we had leave it as a temporary file, there would not be an output to this. At any time I can click on this pencil icon on this geo algorithm, click it and open up that dialog and make any changes that I need to. So you can edit these parameters once they're in place. So I'm going to save the model and close it. And I'm going to expand my model section and you'll see the GST10 group has now been created and there's my model listed as a tool. My model is obviously not yet complete but it's already a geoprocessing tool that I can open, set parameters for, and run. So I'm going to double click on it, and it opens up like another tool. Here's my county's layers input. I'll tell it to use counties for that. The county name attribute, and I'm going to choose county. You know, with this, you may have to actually look at the attribute table first to see which field you want to use. Um, we've already done that. We know that it's county. I'm going to choose to keep the output in Nueces County as a temporary file for now, so I'm not going to fill it in. And I'll click run. The temporary Nueces County layer has been added to QGIS Desktop. I'm going to right click on it and choose Zoom to Layer. And so we've created the first geo algorithm in our model and see how that runs. The model again is a conceptual model that we connect to the data once we're ready to run it. In the next task, I'll continue to develop my model.